Hello, my darling true crime angels. Can you hear me okay? Uh, insightful one, check in, please. I can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, what we're doing first off, before we get to woo-woo, is a few days ago, I interviewed Lee Egan from Crime Online about Letitia Stauk. Now, Lee was on it from the very beginning, and Lee was talking to Letitia a lot, talking to her family, and there were things that she couldn't reveal. Um, some of them she has revealed tonight. Some of them she has sent me text messages to read to you. Again, this was pre-recorded because she couldn't join us tonight. So it's just a behind-the-scenes look at Letitia Stauk leading up to the trial. And, and it's really interesting to hear um, nothing extremely surprising because Letitia is, is so manipulative and so awful. Uh, but it is interesting to hear Lee Egan talk about the experiences she had. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to play Lee Egan's interview that I did with her. And then I'm going to uh, read you, possibly show you some text messages, uh, depending on how they show up on screen, that Letitia was sending to Lee, trying to convince her, you know, that no, she didn't do this again. And here's what happened. And, you know, Al cut his finger and that's why there's blood. And she's trying to convince a reporter that she yeah. didn't do it. It's just crazy. I mean, you remember all of that, right, uh, Insightful? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy. So we're going to play that first, and then we'll do woo-woo. And I am hoping uh, that I get an email back from, hold on, let me tell you who, because I have to pronounce this correctly. I don't want to use his real name, but he sent me this. Uh, it's uh, Callium's Amazing World. This person's been in our chat. He sent me an amazing woo-woo video. And I emailed him uh, earlier and I said, hey, can you come on tonight? Is you know, let's let's do this. And I haven't heard back from him. So I hope it's okay. I hope he gets back with me. If he's in chat, please have him email me. Because I don't want to show the video uh, until he is with us and gives me a hundred percent permission. So in the and so the first 30 minutes or so. Let's just kind of sit back and, and know you won't hear Letitia's voice at all. Not at all. Hi, Cindy S. Ping the router. Red like wine again. Nana Lana. Beth B. Hello, my darling. Reason. Terry Queer. Bjorn Holmquist. PB and J. And I will and I'll say hi to as many people as I can. B and C. Uh, Lori Day. And Lindy Bridges. Uh, Shirley R. Red like wine again in the bushes. Hello, Lindy, Jane Webb, Anonymous. It's cool. Carol Donaldson, Marilyn Landis, Candy Williams, and uh, Nana Lana, Bjorn Holmquist. I can't if I've missed somebody. Miss C D Isaacs. Hello, hello, my darling. If I've missed you, I will try and get, get a big hello to you later. Rhonda Blackburn. Good to see you. J Famous Artist. Hi, Cindy S. Hello. Okay. We're going to get right to it right now. Let's share this. Uh, we will mute ourselves, my darling. And this is an interview I did a few days ago with Lee Egan from Crime Online about Letitia Stauk, the very beginning when Gannon went missing. Here we go. Hey, everyone. I am so thrilled to have back with us. Lee Egan. Lee Egan from Crime Online. She's been a friend of Web Sleuth's YouTube Live and WebSleuth.com for years. And uh, Lee is probably the busiest person I know. You go to CrimeOnline.com, that's Nancy Grace's site, and she is literally all over the world reporting. And, and Lee, first of all, welcome back. It's so good to talk to you. Hi, Trisha. And I just wanted to say really quick to um, all your Web Sleuth listeners, I'm sorry for being MIA. I love you guys and miss you guys. If I could jump on more, I could. Um, and hopefully, you know, this year we'll slow down a little bit and I'll be able to um, to report more whenever Trisha will have me, that is. Hey, well, you're always welcome. And please, no need to apologize because I, we completely understand. I want to talk about Letitia Stauk. Now, what a lot of people probably don't know is, Lee, you were... I think the first journalist to talk to Letitia 
behind bars. And you, I don't want to say you built a relationship or a friendship with her, but you had communication with Letitia. And there was a lot going on behind the scenes that you couldn't talk about. Letitia was just found guilty on all counts uh, in the murder of her stepson, Gannon. She's never getting out of prison, thank God. But let's go back to the very beginning. Now, everybody remember, she claimed that uh, that Gannon just walked out the door and didn't know where he was. And then supposedly some guy named uh, Edgar uh, kidnapped her or him and raped her. I, it was so insane. And eventually, sweet little 11-year-old Gannon's body was found in a suitcase tossed over a bridge in Florida. But Lee, let's go back to the beginning. You started this connection with her that was amazing. Why don't you tell us about that? Sure. Okay, I think the first time I spoke to Letitia was in early March. It was around, a, I'd say around a week or so before she was arrested in Myrtle Beach. Uh -huh. And she had contacted, I, actually I reached out to her and she uh, contacted me back. And her main goal was to get a lie detector test. She wanted me to meet up with her so she could show me a lie detector test, which, of course, she wanted me to give to the public right. that would prove her innocent. Well, of course, that never happened. And right. um, I'm sure, you know, the people that watched the trial noted that um, there was no lie detector test. There was a fake lie detector test, but she couldn't even pass that one. Right. Because uh, the, the questions that she asked had to do with a murder case. So, you know, that never happened. The next time I spoke to her, I believe her daughter, Harley, uh, sent me a text message and said that Leticia was in the hospital. Um, suicide, like she wanted to take her own life um, and she was pregnant. And then after that, I did not speak with her again wow. until she was, yeah, and that was, well, actually, I think she did write me back once. I can't remember exactly what she was, what she said. It was in a, a text message. Um, I don't remember what she said, but she was out of the hospital. But then it was like the day after or so they arrested her. And then, yeah, I spoke to her again in jail. And by that time, her story had changed. Now, during the first days I spoke to her, she was telling me also the story of Eduardo or Edgar, you know, depending on which day it was either Edgar which day or it was. Eduardo. Right. Right, right. Um, you know, during those times, she was telling me about a bloody board found and how that happened when she was dropping off trash and it must have bounced out of the bed of her truck and that um, Eduardo had taken him. And and then so it already, you know, I, I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, which was extremely hard because she kept changing her stories. And then one of the first stories she told when she was in jail was that Edward, Edgar or Eduardo had taken Gannon on a train because what? Yeah, because Al Stouch, which is Gannon's father, owed Edgar money, and they met up on some cruise they took, and that they could have paid the money, but then Al decided not to pay him the money, and so Edgar took Gannon as the the payment. Oh, good God, dear right. God. Okay. <laughs> and then the next time we talked, it had changed again, um, and, and this one was this one was awful, and I wanted to report on this, and I, I couldn't yet. But she was saying that um, a neighborhood boy in Gannon had white powdery substances in their backpack and they were sneaking around with it. You know, she was what? trying to insinuate some sort of, I, be, I believe she was trying to insinuate that they were dabbling in some drug use. Sweet 11-year-old um, Gannon with that right. adorable high voice that was so scared and crying was a, a drug dealer. Yeah, we'd buy that. <laughs> Or, right. God. We'll see what I believe, Trisha. I believe that she knew what was going to, she, or she thought she knew what was, was going to come out in a toxicology report, which of course it did. Right. There was hydrocodone in his system. We don't know how much because of how long it took, you know, to find him. Right. But I believe that was part of her angle was, you know, when those toxicology results do come out, well, you know what? He was, he was dabbling with a friend and with this powdery stuff. And I don't know what it was. That was, that was her angle with that. Good so. God. Hey, Lee, I, can I ask you, just hold on one second. This is normal for my interviews. There's always okay. some catastrophe happening right behind me. Just hang tight. I'll be right back. <laughs> no, you're fine. Take but your time. Anyway, yeah, it is just appalling. Absolutely appalling. Okay. Appalling how she tried to 
with these ridiculous stories. And I guess in her mind, maybe, you know, Lee, and we can get into this later, but maybe it worked when she was growing up. Maybe these ridiculous yeah. stories bought her time in her uh -huh. real life. But anyway, so continue. She was trying to say that she didn't know what the substance was. And, and obviously she must have given Gannon hydrocodone would be my guess. Correct. I yeah. believe it was out her, her, her ex-husband's hydrocodone that he said he had left at home in a drawer in his uh, bedroom, which only Letitia knew where it was. Oh, I don't God. think, I really don't think Gannon got in there and smashed up the hydrocodone into powder no. to share with his little friend who spent their time riding bikes and playing video games. Now, Unbelievable. That, just, that, didn't, that didn't happen. No, it did not. You know? And then I think the next time I spoke to her, it actually wasn't her. She had an inmate call me from the jail and pretend to be her. And, you know, honestly, I don't remember what the lady said. I, I just, I was laughing because I knew it wasn't her. I'm like, are, are you sure this is Leticia? And, and she was like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, she couldn't answer anything I asked. And then she just hung up on me. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. And, that is, you know, yeah. if it wasn't so serious, it would be the most hilarious thing ever. Exactly. It was. You know, I don't know what to make of all of her, her lies, but, you know, what I do know is the jury got it right. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. Because regardless of what kind of personality disorder she has, she still knew what she was doing. And she still took extreme measures, extreme mm -hmm. measures to cover this crime up and to cover the evidence up and the lie after lie. I mean, I, I, honest, I don't think I've seen ever, anything like this in all my years reporting. I don't think I've ever seen anyone go to this length of, of devious, you know, just devious plans and lies right. and manipulation. It was, it was, it was horrible. And, and so anyway, you I know you tried to call her in jail a few times and you did talk to her. Um, yeah. What other things did she, did she say? You had some pretty long conversations with her, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and you know what, Trisha, I think what I can do, if you don't mind, because um, it's been so long, mm -hmm. I can just send you over those conversations at this point, and you can you can play as much as you like. Oh, you know, okay. Point, let's open. Let's do that. Um, Let That's a great idea. I would really appreciate that, because fascinating yeah, stuff. I, I, it was I, some whopper. There were so many whoppers. I mean, I can't even remember all of them, but right. yeah, it was, it, was, it was definitely interesting. It was just, you know, in the back of my head, it was always about Canon. I wanted to believe her. I wanted to to make her think she had somebody, you know, in the media that was listening to her and on her side um, and just wanted the truth to get out. But, you know, the more she talked, the more it became apparent that there was something seriously, seriously wrong. Exactly. Uh, we had Letitia's classmate on. I don't know if they were friends, actually, but they were acquaintances. And the one thing I remember her telling me was she was very mean and, and mm -hmm. manipulative even back then. What was surprising, I think, to a lot of people in the trial of Letitia Stout, who was found guilty of killing her 11-year-old uh, stepson, Gannon, was that nobody in her family came to support her. Did you ever, did you ever uh, talk to her family, or did you find out why? I didn't find out why. I did speak to a few family members. I spoke to Harley. Um, but this was back when, this was in 2020, you know, so Harley was definitely on her mother's side. Right. And then I spoke to one of her aunts. Uh, she she doesn't want her, she doesn't want to be named. I'll just say it was one of her aunts that was okay. also on her side at that time. But the aunt was like, but, if, you know, if the evidence comes out and it proves that she did this, then, of course, she should pay for it. You know, which is what I think is, I'm not really sure what they would have been able to say anyways to make a difference. You know, right. if it were my guess, I think it'd be difficult for any family member to wrap their head around some, you know, defending somebody who killed a child. Uh, I mean, and even Harley, Harley was on her side almost to the end, and even she wouldn't testify for her, so right. I just don't, maybe there just wasn't anyone that thought highly enough of her past to, to come out and defend her. To say anything decent about her, because from all appearances, it looks like there really wasn't anything decent about her there really oh. wasn't which brings me to a point and I, <laughs> i've seen yeah i've seen a lot of people uh get angry at al uh gannon's mm -hmm. dad for marrying leticia now correct me if i'm wrong uh al was married to landon leticia was a friend of theirs they started hanging out and then 
Al and Landon got a divorce and he ended up marrying Letitia. Do you think, and this, this is what I think, that it was possible that Letitia could have this facade that what that Al didn't crack through until it was too late? I do. I absolutely do. And if you listen to Al speak, um, he, to me on surface, I don't know him, um, but it just seems like he's just an honest, straightforward guy. And mm -hmm. he probably took her at face value and thought yes. she was an honest, straightforward person. You know, she was an educator. She was supposedly educated. Um, and she, she was a teacher. She mm -hmm. worked with kids. Right. I mean, everything. Yeah, I, I absolutely believe that he thought she was a completely different person. I, I absolutely do. Yes. And I think people need to realize that it's real easy to sit back and judge uh, looking mm -hmm. at what we know now, but people like Letitia are very manipulative. Even Landon said, you know, I loved you. I trusted you. And she did. She right. did. And uh, they, I, I, let's face it. If Landon or Al had any idea there was an inkling of this monster, they would have had nothing to do with her. So I think that's a real unfair judgment of people to make, but Let's let's continue. So Al marries Letitia. And Letitia ends up basically the babysitter for Gannon and his younger sister because Al had to work full time. Uh, Landon was not in a position, if I remember correctly, to have the kids full time. And so it fell on Letitia and she started to resent that. So could you tell us a little bit about that, please? That's exactly, well, I mean, you, you said it perfectly. She, you know, when they got married, they lived in South Carolina and that's where their family's from. So you've got to remember Gannon had, you know, grandmothers, probably aunts, uncles, right. all kinds of adults that could help her watch them. Especially, I, I believe even she said that they were great about helping him on the, she, you know, one of those um, interviews she had with one of the psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. She said that, you know, when, when they were in South Carolina, they were great with, with helping with the children on the weekends. Oh, well, they can move to Colorado. She knows no one else gone, and it's it's completely up to her to take care of these kids. Maybe she had never been in that position before, where it was just her watching Gannon mm -hmm. for that you know long stretch a period of time before, and she couldn't handle it, and she snapped. So you know that's that's my opinion. Right. No, I but agree it, with it, you. It, it seems probable. It seems because just it just leads up to there. She didn't even want to be in Colorado. She made up some excuse not to be in Alaska, and it worked. I believe it was some kind of alleged sexual assault that happened up there. Yeah, something. And it ended up to where they moved. They moved from Alaska mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately ended up in Colorado, which was basically, to her, the same as <laughs> It was the same as Alaska, right. a cold place where she knew no one. Um, and she was left alone, you mm -hmm. know, because he was in the military, of course. Right. She signed up for when she, when she married him, she knew what she was getting into. Military people have to, you know, they don't work a nine to five job normally, so exactly, and they move around a lot. But correct, Letitia reminds me of a spoiled brat. And <laughs> if I remember correctly, early on, and I don't want to attribute this to you, I was talking to somebody who said that her family basically gave her whatever she wanted, just like to keep her calm. Does that? sound like a probability when she was growing up i mean i i don't think anybody told me that but it, it does sound probable mm -hmm. it, it really does yeah. you know except for now it's not children crime she's committing it's an adult crime i hate adult crime and horrible just, i don't know i you know i just i don't buy the the any kind of insanity what so i just don't buy it mm -hmm. i don't it doesn't matter because yeah. she knew right from wrong regardless that's the whole her point. Upbringing. yep that's she, the whole she point knew. If you, you're not insane legally, if, if you know right from wrong, wrong, and she tried to hide the fact of what she did to Gannon, to, to get the facts out there, because there's been so many rumors, uh, remember mm -hmm. that the candle, the video of the candle was released, and it was uh, put out on the internet, and that was a big thing where we've heard the recording with Letitia chastising Gannon, basically making him sob, letting him think that his mistake was going to have to but they're going to have to move because of what he did. Uh, tell us about that period of time. What was going on there? Well, see, that's the thing. Uh, it, it, that's going to come down to opinion. And 
I'm going to just go with what the prosecutor said. Let's do that. Yes. Because, okay. There was, Gannon was not playing with a candle. I believe that that was intentionally set by Letitia mm-hmm. to harm him. And I don't know what happened or maybe it didn't, he woke up and he ran out, but something happened or it was just a setup. I, I don't know. I just don't think Gannon did it. No, I don't think um, so either. Why did she record that video? Why did she? It, just, it makes no sense to me. I, I can't wrap my head around it. She's like, why? Unless he wanted to have proof that, oh, you know what? See, I was doing this. I was helping. And, you know, she, it ended up hurting her more than helping her. But Well, exactly. I mean, and, and we'll play the video because if I remember correctly, she even posted it and then took yes. it down. And that's how it got out. And it's like, why would you think? you're berating of a this sweet little boy where he's sobbing and you're saying it's his fault that you're going to have to move. Why would you think that's a good thing? But that is such a good look into Letitia's mind. In her mind, she is always I, the victim. I agree. And if you notice too, in court, they played more of the video and oh, he was like, I'm worried about my blisters. Oh, is what he said. oh my God. Oh, but Tisha so put that part out of the video when she posted hers. I never, I've never seen that part or heard that part mm-hmm. until it was played in court. Right, and it, it just showed what a sweet little boy he was. Uh, Dan- Absolutely, and they showed her premeditation already. Yeah, she was already doing, she was cutting the videos. You know, posting what she thought would help her. Exactly. Uh, Gannon's little sister. Oh my gosh, I forgot her name. I'm so sorry. Lena. I'm sorry, Lena. What? Lena. Lena. Uh huh. Beautiful little girl was only five at the time, I believe. Do you know if um, she? I'm assuming she was interviewed. Do you know if what she had to say about Letitia at all, or anything what she may have talked about? No, I, I wish I did. Uh, it's a good question, actually, because yeah. I feel that she she might know a lot. Um, you know, she's a little girl. They might not want to have pushed her too much. Maybe when she gets older, uh, she'll recall more. But yeah. yeah, no, I just, I, I, I don't know. Here's a common question that a lot of people ask me, and I have no idea. Do we know sure. if Gannon complained to the adults about Letitia being mean to him? Not as far as I know. In fact, um, and you know what? That just brings up a good point. Did you watch the trial when Harley said? That her mother would backhand her when she yes. when she talked back. Yes. Okay. That's that's her that's her own daughter there. Mm-hmm. You don't think she wasn't doing that to the stepchildren? Oh, I mean, I, I just feel that there was probably abuse in the home. Uh, if Gannon said it, or, I mean, he was you know as a young boy, he might have been too scared. Maybe he was getting to that age where he's talking back, saying, "Look, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell what you did." And, exactly. You know, that's what set her off. You know. Very well, could be. And, and again, uh, she probably ruled in, well, not probably, she ruled in fear. Better not say anything or it'll be worse yeah. next time. You know? Absolutely. And I hope well, you, I, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Please go. I do believe there was abuse in the home mm-hmm. prior. I, you know, just because it's not on paper or there's no arrest or complaint doesn't mean it didn't happen. Children, especially young children, are scared. Right. He was likely scared to talk. I'm sure he was. Uh, there were several times that you and I talked. Uh, before the trial, where you said, there's things I can't tell you, but I'll be able to tell you later. Do you have those Mm -hmm. things now? Can you tell us? If I can remember. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I I don't know what they were. I probably need to go back and listen to those recordings and look at my notes. Mm -hmm. A little bit unprepared. I'm sorry, but I will will get back to you on that, and I will tell you everything. Now that the the trial is over, it's it's all on the table. Exactly. Just give me a a little bit. (laughs) That. <laughs> no problem because this is uh, to let everybody know this was a last minute interview we just decided to do to do this like an hour ago and i appreciate you <laughs> taking the time because i have just been dying to talk to you about it now you were on the witness list i was talk about that and i'm glad i didn't have to go because if i did have to go that would have meant no reporting whatsoever i mm-hmm. could have could not you know not even put out a single story while that you know, maybe Casey or Jackie or somebody could have handled it for me, but I wanted to report. I wanted to, to see this to the end. Right. I wanted to report until the end. So, um, yeah, our attorney, uh, our legal team with um, Crime Online, 
actually uh, sent them in a letter to try to block me becoming a witness, and it worked, Good. and I was able to report on it. Good. Now, did you actually go down to the trial in Colorado? No. As soon as we found out it was going to be live streamed, well, I'm like, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can sit and watch, <laughs> watch it. I'll watch it right here. You can sit and watch it. Uh, tell us, just tell us your feelings about, your observations, rather. I mean, we, we did see it, but I, you have such an inside lane, if you will, into the Letitia mm -hmm. Stout story. When you saw her yeah. doing things like, you know, casually flipping the bird off to people and and things like that. What were your observations of Letitia during the trial? You know, to me, it just seemed like she was still trying to break rules. Like, she, if you tell her the sky is blue, she's going to say it's gray, right. that kind of thing. Uh -huh. You know, of course, she's probably also trying to do her best to appear as crazy as she can. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, her outlandish life certainly already helped that. But, right. you know, when you have in her hair the way, I, I'm not making fun of her appearance whatsoever, but, you know, she kind of put her hair over her face and held her head down and was kind of swinging her head side to side. And, you know, just looking at her, you know, compared to talking to her, she seemed completely, she did not seem insane when I spoke to her. She was very coherent. And uh, to see her acting like that, in my opinion, you know, she's kind of playing the part of right. Maria or whoever the name of the day is to make herself appear insane. Yeah, the multiple or disassociative personality, just whatever it is she claims right. to have is, is ridiculous. Uh, I want to remind right, I'm sorry. Maria, it, Maria was one of the, um, the names of her alter personalities. Uh, and she ultimately blames Maria for shooting someone in a cape. Of course, that was Gannon. Oh, but, God. you know, it was, she was blaming it on this um, this violent personality of her, hers named Maria. And, again, she didn't testify. And the only person we had that testified for her was Dr. Lewis. Let's talk about right. Dr. Lewis. Obviously. Oh, Mr. Lewis can talk herself. <laughs> oh I never God. thought. I mean, no, it was interesting, but wow, she went on and on and on. I, you know, I was like, is this ever going to end? I, I, but um, I think she's a very intelligent lady and I, I respect her opinion. Um, it just so happened that the, the jury disagreed. Well, I don't think she helped Letitia at all. You know, I, I, mean, I just. She made it worse. Yeah. She made it worse. She made it a lot worse. And I don't know why. That just says to me that was the only person they could get. And she did, Dr. Lewis did the best she could, probably with mm -hmm. what she had. One mm -hmm. thing I was confused on, and believe me, I'm confused on a lot. Uh, did the jury have an option of guilty but insane? Did they have that option, or was it just guilty oh, or not guilty? Goodness, that is a good question. I don't know, but you know what? I, I don't think they would have. I don't know. I don't I'm think not, they would I have voted even, for her. I don't think they would have voted for that at all. Yeah, I can speak on that, right? Yeah, I'm glad they did it. I'm glad. I'm I'm glad that um, she got what she got. Yeah. Well, the reason I ask is her defense attorney basically, um, when they got up with, I, I think it was opening statements, he basically admitted yeah. that she did it, but she was insane when she did it. Uh, he didn't right. say that, but I thought, well, is that an option for the jury? But it, again, everybody remember. The bar for insanity in U.S. courts is this. If you try and cover up your crime, you're not insane. End of story, black and white. And I can't think of covering up a crime more than putting a body in a suitcase and throwing it off a bridge in, you know, five states away. Um, well, another thing I, we want to get cleared up. When I say we, I mean me. Uh, how, <laughs> how did she get Gannon out of the house and into... It was a U-Haul, I think, or a, one of those big trucks that you rent. Yeah, like a rental van. Um, right. She put him in a suitcase. It was a big suitcase. Okay. I mean, it wasn't one of the little carry-ons that you, you know, you travel right. with. It was, it was a big suitcase. And um, uh, when he was a little boy, I'm sure. Oh, I don't even want to think about this. I know. I know. I'm sure she. Um, I'm sure she like folded his little legs and little arms and put stuffed him in. it in there. And was just able to make it look like her luggage. And then oh. the prosecution basically said, while Harley was asleep in the hotel, she took this van out 
And that's when she did it, when Harley wasn't with her. And mm -hmm. um, you have to wonder, Lee Egan from Crime Online, that's everybody, that's who we're talking with. You have to wonder if they had not been doing those repairs in Florida at that time, would we have found Gannon? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think it was divine intervention. It something was working. Not, I mean, the water could have. I, I, the water could have washed. As far as Leticia's concerned, she already thought he was in Mexico. Right. The water was in Mexico. Water just but, took him away. But it didn't. A divine intervention. Um. Yes. Yeah. Something in the universe. Was not, there she may not even him. be in, in prison. <clears throat> I mean, she may not be in jail right now. Right. Had that had those workers not been there. So. Yeah. You just Thank have you. to wonder. You have to wonder. Uh, one other Leticia story that I want everybody to remember, and that's the peanut butter. Do you remember the poison peanut butter <laughs> story? If so, can kind you repeat of. it? Is that, a, is that what happened in jail? Yes. Uh, she yes. Did she tell me that? I'm sorry. I think she is, did. She... I think she did. Okay. Yeah. That somebody was poisoning her peanut butter. Right. Yeah. I, there's there's no bait. There's no truth to that that has been proven. I, I, I think that was she ended up suing suing the county for some kind of something with her diet restrictions or food or or mistreatment or whatnot. But I, as far as I know, nothing has has come from that. Right. Just no. Another one of her one of her stories, one of her tales. What concerns me, Lee, and and again, I I don't mean to put you on the spot because I know you're not supposed to, uh, you know, give your opinion on a story. But maybe if you and if you can't weigh in on this, I, I understand. My worry is. Um, you know, she's she may be book smart in some ways, but she's not incredibly smart. However, I do yeah. think she knows how to use her her feminine ways, if you will. And I worry right. she's going to hook up with a guard and get pregnant. I wouldn't put it past oh. her. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's my first thought. I'm um, knocking for wood right now, yeah. Trisha. Please, my, no, please. That was my first I thought. Know. I hope not. I, I have no opinion whatsoever on that. I'm just, I hope not. I know. For the sake of that baby, I hope. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> I know. That's just, you know, it's. I it's, wouldn't, in my opinion, though, Trisha, I would not put it past her. I don't know her well enough to say, but look what, look at what she's capable of. So, you know, it's not a far stretch to think she's not capable of right. picking up with a guard. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to uh, Al or Landon Gannon's parents, but if you do, please pass along our condolences and our love. And, you know, we understand. Oh. And and for every idiotic troll out there, there's hundreds of thousands of other people that love them and just want to hug them. You know, I, my heart just breaks yeah. for them. You know, they, I absolutely will. I'm hoping, you know, once everything settles and uh, they get back home, I didn't, you know, I wasn't there um to interview them mm -hmm. so i'm hoping once they get back home i can maybe reach out to landon again or reach out to um her aunt i, I think her name was victoria mm -hmm. her a few, or veronica i'm sorry i would spoken to her a few times but yeah absolutely trisha i'll absolutely pass on that message do do and uh i would love to have them on the live stream if they ever want to come on but i wouldn't blame them if they never wanted to talk to you know go on a, a make an appearance anywhere again after everything has been done Al is awesome. He and, is. You know, he when he speaks, he speaks with conviction. Yeah, I, I feel he'd make a good advocate, like you know, like the Klaus Kid's father, like like, like Holly Klaus. He, he gives off those those vibes to me. Like he could probably make a difference if he ever wanted to, you know, explore that avenue. Mark Klaus is a good friend of ours. I should introduce Mark. him. I, I should and say, Mark, the, here's here's somebody that maybe could step in your shoes when you want to definitely retire. Absolutely. Wouldn't know? that be great? Oh, that, that is, would be. Yeah. That would be because boy, he uh, Al has been through hell and back. Um, so okay, you'll get back to us on those stories that you couldn't tell me a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I begged you, and and you wouldn't. You you held firm. <laughs> I guilt tripped you. I did everything I could for you to break your confidences, <laughs> and you didn't. Thank now, you know, it's just, now they're all yours. I'm saying them straight to you. Thank you. Um, let's talk a little bit more, Lee Egan, and then and then I'll let you go. Uh, what what are you working on? Now, I, I, I see your name. I see your byline, your headlines. My God, the stuff you work on. First of all, and we've talked about this before, before we get to what you're working on. Do you need therapy? I mean, just reading the headlines. Sometimes I think I need to see my shrink. I can't take this. You know, and I'm laughing because, yeah, 
I, I know. Mean, this, I know. Um, yeah. this trial, this, like, this trial literally knocked the wind out of me. I had to take a breather for a few days, but mm -hmm. um, usually I just, I try to meditate and, you know, walk, walking helps, but yeah, there's some times when it, it gets, it gets too much to handle, you know, but then you just got to remember, keep the, um, the goal, the children, the victims, that, that's, that's the ultimate goal here. So. And you are the voice for those victims many a time. Let's talk about a story. Uh, when this airs, we will probably have already covered it, but it's a, uh, a young woman, an EMT, who was getting uh, ready yes. to testify at her, uh, her rape trial. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Correct. That is the exact story I, I wanted to talk with you about. Um, sure. Yes. Uh, it's going on in, in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Her name is Michelle Jordan. Um, she's an EMT and she also worked part time at a recreation. I think it was the Cleveland Recreation Department. And that's how she knew an alleged rapist um, identified as 65 year old Michael Stennett. Mm -hmm. That's S E N N E T T. Anyhow, um, so his, his court date was coming up for the rape case and, you know, days before she just mysteriously vanishes. She's just gone without a trace. She uh, went to get something in her car, never came back inside, left all her clothes inside, with belongings, everything, just, just gone. And no one, no one knows anything at this point. Police are kind of tight lipped. Um, they're not saying that Stennett is a suspect in her disappearance. But they're not ruling it out either. So that's what we're trying to follow now. You know, the, the first um, goal is to hopefully they can find her and find her safe. So, and then after that, figure out. Right. So two things. Uh, she worked in the corrections department, and that's how she knew this alleged rapist. Um, oh, I'm, no, I'm sorry. A recreation department. Recre like the, like her, right. That's how she knew this guy. So she was not the one raped, but she was going to testify somehow against him. I'm not sure. We're not sure who okay. the victim is okay. at this point. Um, Didn't they I'm say sure. he he was stalking her? Yes, he was. Yeah, I see that. Oh, I wish I knew who the victim was. Of course, we probably couldn't name the victim anyways. But mm -hmm. she is somehow connected to it in some way. I don't. Maybe her, it was her friend. I don't know. We don't know. But he did begin stalking her. There was a gunshot uh, through her window. No one was hurt, but. Police think it was just a way, kind of a scare tactic. A warning. Uh, yes, like a warning. And then she switched departments to the recreation center because he was stalking her, allegedly showing up outside her home, sitting outside her home, sitting outside her work. And then she's, and now she's gone. Yeah. Just boom, like that. Oh, God, you would think she could have gotten some sort of a hardcore protection, you know, the police or something. It's just so scary. I believe she did try. I mean, she did tell her employer she was scared. Um, and, you know, that's why they switched it to a different apartment. I mm -hmm. I don't know if she made a – yeah, she had to have made a police report as well. So, I mean, it looks like she did take the correct step. But, I mean, I guess there's only so much you can do. Um, yeah. In fact, without... speaking of Mark Class, Mark Class has always, okay. has always said to me, Tricia, if somebody is out to get you and they're determined, they'll get you. You know, oh my. yeah, I mean, he's a firm believer and you've just got to be very, very careful. And then a lot of times that doesn't even work, you know, so yeah. if he was going to, uh, it, it sounds like, and again, we don't know the details. They're being, like you said, they're being very tight lipped about it. But if she was the key witness that could oh prove his, his um, guilt, his guilt, he had a great motive to do this. And again, what an idiot. What does he think? And no. that's what it's turning out to be. It turns, it's turning out to be that she was going to be the witness, uh, the key witness. So, mm -hmm. exactly. And, you know, again, does he think no one's going to go, hmm, I, I wonder if it was the person she was going to testify against. I just... The, yeah, the person that was stalking her, yeah. that was showing up at her work and her house. Come on. It is <laughs> so frustrating. It is so frustrating. And again, it feels like it feels like it just keeps getting worse and I don't know if it's just a bigger population we are just able to hear about it easily now more than even a mm -hmm. few years ago what do you think being right there in the in the center of, of this do you think it's getting worse it, out there believe it or not crime is actually like compared to a decade ago especially compared to the 90s it's actually a lot lower than it used to be oh, oh that's we great 
yeah, we see it more. We see it on social media. We see it on news. We see it on television, right. on our phones. I mean, it's just all over the place and people are getting caught quickly. Details are coming out faster, you know, and it's just thrown at you. So it does seem, you know, and uh, many people think that many people think that it seems like crime is, is increasing, mm -hmm. but in fact, you know, according to studies and I'll, I'll get that over to you. Okay. Um, it's, it's decreasing. It's, it's not, it's, it's not half as bad as it was in the nineties and it's, it's decreased significantly, um, in over a decade. Well, that's, that's good news. And we're, you know what, how about if we end it on a, an up note here, Lee Egan, sure. we love you. And I don't know if you realize how many times I rely on your reporting. Uh, and you know, oh, I, I love you too. And yes, yeah, anytime, wonderful. anytime you need anything, I'm just, a, I mean, I might not answer right away, but <laughs> that's okay. And then, but I will eventually get back to you. If it's an emergency, just to say, text me with a 911 message and I'll jump on it, Wonderful. whatever you need. I'll tell you what, and I and I will keep on you about those Letitia stories because I've remembered that. I filed that Absolutely. away. So It's coming to play. Thank you, darling. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you, and I'll see you in October at CrimeCon. We're going to be at CrimeCon. It's going to be a blast. Thanks, Lee Egan from Crime yeah. Online. You take care, okay? Thanks, Patricia. Talk bye to you bye. later. Bye. We are back. We are back. Anyway, that was uh, Lee Agan. She had a few uh, behind the scenes stories. She's getting back to me with the others, but she did send me a whole bunch of text messages from Letitia that I can read really quickly. But first, we were talking about Lachelle Jordan. And boy, did it look like this EMT had been kidnapped by the man that was stalking her, the man that she was going to testify against in an R trial. And uh, we don't know who the victim was. We don't know what her testimony was. She just vanished. Well, she was found late yesterday and she's safe. Thank God. And uh, I'm going to read this. This is from um, News 5 in Cleveland, ABC. Lachelle Jordan safe told authorities she was kidnapped. She called authorities from a convenience store. It's what Clevelanders had been hoping and praying for. Cleveland EMT Lachelle Jordan is no longer missing. Her father, Joseph Jordan, told News 5 that uh, Lachelle had been missing since Saturday. While police and family and colleagues spent the last several days searching for her, Lachelle Jordan, the Cleveland EMT that authorities said had been the victim of stalking, had a torn and tattered shirt and no shoes as she limped into the open pantry convenience store in East Cleveland. The surveillance obtained by News 5 gives a glimpse into the moments before Jordan was whisked away to the hospital for treatment. Her condition is stable. Uh, father saw his daughter briefly and said she looked to be okay. Now, the police have not released any other information. Uh, the dad says, we don't know yet. What, what we don't know yet is what transpired between her disappearance on Saturday and the moment she turned up Thursday night. A worker at the convenience store said an injured woman came into the store and surveillance video from the store shows a woman who is having some difficulty walking into the store. Her clothes are torn and she is barefoot. So hang on here. I'm going to play this uh, little piece of video. Hang on, everybody. Just a minute. Let me make sure you can see this. Yeah, there it is. Okay, hang on. I'm going to make this picture as big as possible. Well, that's as big as I can get it, I think. So, okay, why isn't it playing? Oh, that's why. Here, here we go. We did, again, speak with the clerk, listen in to hear what he says led to the call for help. I come to the store inside and give the store phone to her and she called the foolish and foolish come and uh, help her that the re i see that kind of things to hear that i help them like a phone mm -hmm. to contact everyone then when she get the phone then she immediately called the foolish
kind of hard to see. Uh, they said she walked in the store. She was limping and her shirt was torn. No matter what, she is safe. Thank you. God, that's a great ending to a story because that never happens. So that is wonderful. Okay, I'm going to read you some of these text messages from Leticia to, uh, to Lee Egan. I won't put them up because it's kind of hard to understand what she's doing here. But keep in mind, the context is she's trying to convince Lee Egan that she is innocent of killing Gannon. And it's just craziness. It's absolute craziness. So um, hang on here. Okay. Thank you, Insightful One. Let me get this really quickly. And she was going to send me the uh, audio to the phone calls. But, you know, I remember those phone calls. And, oh, my gosh, they were so awful. Um, not only what Letitia said, but because of the, uh, the, the phone in the jail. This was in jail. She'd, she'd call Lee. She would call Lee and talk to her, trying to convince her that she didn't kill Gannon. It's, that's just crazy. So anyway, um, and I think right here, Letitia is talking about the receipt for the rental truck. Okay. And she texts Lee Egan, did the rental receipt get posted? Because I hope not my credit card, because now my budget account has been hacked. Really, 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 Letitia, because, uh, and then Lee writes back, everything was completely blacked out, confirmation number, rental number, all of that. And she's trying to blame Lee, claiming that her budget uh, account was hacked. I guess budget rental, budget credit card, budget bank account, budget brain. I don't know what she's talking about. But again... Letitia trying to blame Lee for something that happened. Here's another one from Letitia. Um, I think, is this from Letitia? Yeah, it says, and I don't know in what context she's saying this. It's just weird. She says, then you were loading shovels, carpet, and trash cans left with Gannon at 1230 at night left uh is it lena is that her her uh daughter's yes. name uh, lena. Lena. Uh, the yeah. gannon sister yeah. right anyway trash cans left with gannon at 12 30 at night left lena home alone and then came back without him they are insane see 99 percent of these people don't even know the true story that they're they're talking out their ass okay of course because it's everybody else's fault and not Letitia. She goes on to text her again, to text Lee Egan again. I saw something else someone was asking, but I cut, the, I cut the piece of carpet out and threw it and the candle outside because of the smell and the cops did get it. So no, I didn't dispose of any carpet. Okay, let's pick this apart a little bit. She threw it out and the cops got it. Well, she tried to dispose of it, but she here she's trying to say, well, I didn't dispose of it. I, I threw it out and the cops got it. So it wasn't disposed. Think, it, I mean, she's talking in circles. My God, my head would be spinning having to deal with her. And then she writes, the selfie was from Gannon's phone. We never had mine. That's what I told you in the beginning. I'm saying I told you we had Gannon's phone. And Lee writes back, we never talked about a selfie until today. Again, she's uh, and what uh, what significance that is, I'm not sure. But to her, in her mind, in Letitia's mind, that means something big. Now, here's the other one, and and I think we've heard this before, but Letitia floated this at the very beginning, and this was like this was this was before she was arrested. This was like right at the beginning when she's texting Lee Egan. Letitia says Albert cut his finger off in the garage before. Gannon has frequent nosebleeds and picked his skin all the time. I've had a midterm miscarriage in the home. Harley fell on the stairs before and busted her mouth. So it sounds mad, but we live where we 
we live there and people get, and then it cuts off, probably get hurt is what they're saying. So I guess what she's trying to say is all the blood they found, part of it was her miscarriage. What, what the hell? It, this, oh, anyway. It's crazy. Now, I don't know. I don't know who they're talking, who Letitia's talking about here. Was somebody pregnant in this scenario? I'm wondering if she's talking about Harley here. Listen to this. Now, again, this was years ago, people. Quote, they are keeping her because she's pregnant. When I brought her Tuesday night, she was losing her mind and saying crazy, crazy things and just manic. And then uh, Lee writes, oh, my God, what? Is the baby okay? How far along? And then nothing from Letitia. So I'm not sure. i not sure who she's talking about there. I tried to get in touch with her today, and I, uh, I, I couldn't. Was there anybody that was pregnant that we remember from this? Not that I remember. Yeah. I hope she wasn't referring to Harley. I don't think so, because she wouldn't say, I don't the way she says brought her home, it's like they brought somebody to stay for a little bit. Yeah. And, and Harley lived there, so. That could be. So anyway, she goes on to text her. Dogs went out the back door to the fence in yard like they always do. Like at 2.52, there is basement motion while I'm closing the back door for the dogs, which is upstairs. Too many times for that to keep happening. I know it's a minute, but the dogs want treats. And then it ends. And then she writes, gets home at 4.46, set to poke open. Lena said she didn't. Gannon was in his room, which was the basement motion. No, wait. She gets there at 438. And then her and Lana leave at 446. She's got to be talking about Harley there, I would think. Yeah. I know Monday Gannon returned with a bag in his hand. When we got back from the hike, he had pooped in his pants. And we went straight in to take a bath. So I know this was not Sunday because the bag... Uh, the bag because we did not drive that truck again her text messages like leave out major words to make it all make sense yeah albert said they took him and showed him blood who does that they show people this is a crime scene supposedly if there was blood it was from a boy who is hyperactive and albert cut his finger off in the garage before just trying to you know Blame all that, the, the blood on, uh, not on what she, the horrible, terrible thing she did to Gannon, but it was him being hyperactive and cutting himself and Gannon and, and Al cutting his finger and blah, blah, blah. And then she writes to Lee, check this out. They are saying this is a crime scene with all the blood in the house, which they let people live in during the supposed crime scene for seven plus days, then close it off. But then a video shows him leaving with me walking. They need the footage of Harley coming home. She came home. I think she got off at 4.15. And then not long after, her and Lena go to the store. And they were in the driveway where the truck is. It's not a full story. Anyway, that's all she said. She, um, Letitia is texting Lee Egan, but like a couple of days after the crime, trying yes. to convince her that she's innocent and the blood was Al's and Gannon's and she had a miscarriage and that's why there was blood and oh my God. Yeah. So um, hopefully I will get more information from Lee because I just find it fascinating um, that, uh, uh, you know what? There, oh, I better not say that. Anyway, <laughs> you know, that's terrible. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to tease everybody. I really don't, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, a couple of things after the, uh, trial from yesterday. Heather Daybell wrote something on Facebook and I want to read it. Now, Heather is married to Chad Daybell's brother and she's been interviewed by Hidden True Crime. Fantastic three-part interview. Do not miss that one. Okay. Again, now we're moving on just to uh, Lori Daybell for just a minute, just a minute here. And I want to read this because I have a question. Okay. And of course, now it's not on my yeah. Facebook. Hang on here. Okay. 
Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Well, is this her? Yeah, this is her. Okay. So this is from Heather Smith Daybell. Today was bittersweet and very emotional. So grateful for a guilty verdict for Lori Vallow on all counts. So difficult still that these horrific crimes even happened. I'm so grateful for law enforcement, prosecutors, and all involved in helping this day have the result it did. Thank you to everyone who has messaged, called, stopped by, and has given support the last several years. It has been needed and very appreciated. All my love to Larry, Kay, Phyllis, Ron, and all of the many family and friends who love and care about JJ, Tylee, Tammy, and Charles. Here's the line. One down, two to go. I thought it'd be one down, one to go. Huh. One down, two to go. Who is she talking about? Who's the other one? Is it Lori's niece, Melanie? That's the only thing I can think of. That's what popped in my head. So my brain's thinking right now, but that was first. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. So uh, um, we are friends on Facebook, but, you know, I have friends with so many people I don't know. And she has no idea who I am. But I'll ask her, if anybody in chat, what do you think that means? One, uh, let's see, one down and two to go. One down and two to go. Maybe that's it, V.S. Thubido. Maybe she's talking about trials. That could be. Oh, that could be, yeah. Yeah, talking about, you know, this one down, two more to go, Chad, and then Lori in Arizona. That could be. Yep. That Very could true. be. Yeah, but see, the first thing I thought of was people, not trials. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Oh, and they're having a trial for Brandon, too. That's right. And remember, yes. they put out a press release saying that they want Lori. They're going to prosecute her. Absolutely. So, yeah, I bet she's talking about trials and not people. But still, I'm sorry. After everything we've learned about Melanie Pulowski, what do you think? I think she knew. I think. I don't know. I can't say she participated, but she at the very least knew they were going to shoot at Brandon. Oh, yeah. You know? And and then the texting with her and Lori about Lori. I can't remember the exact words. Basically asking her, are you, are you going to do this? You know, these are bad things. You know, mm -hmm. can you do this? But it won't be for long because basically insinuating they'd be gone to another place by then, you know. Right. Right. So she was, I think she was in with Lori, like Alex was. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I'm trying to, gosh, I don't know if she was just totally manipulated by her or if she is like Lori. I'm not sure. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, from what I've learned in the trial, I wouldn't want her around any kids. No. She believed in that I light and dark baloney. She believed in all of that. You know, you know and remember. Yeah. It was her kids that Chad said, do you want me to hurt them? Yeah. Because they were driving Lori crazy in the car. I have a, a feeling she looked up to Lori. Maybe yeah. she was her mother figure and she was trying to emulate her. For mm -hmm. example, she's already had how many husbands so far? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Lori Stout. Very true. Uh, Melanie needs to be charged. She said her kids were dark also. And if she had gotten her kids back from her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And anyway, let's um, just to clear up what Heather Daybell said. She said one down, two to go. I thought she was talking about people. And uh, everyone I read that to said yes. And then thank you for the mad chatters. They said they were probably talking about trials. That's right. Because Lori has another trial and so does Chad. And that would make perfect sense. But it would make sense too. If, I don't know. I just... Melanie Boudreaux scares me. She really scares me. Oh, Pink Fallow. Let's go back to, God, we're going to skip around here forever. Uh, Pink Fallow, that's right. Remember Letitia talked about a pregnant woman with a belly full of cash that she brought home? That's who she's talking about. 
Oh, that she, she was geez. pregnant and she was a she was you know a maniac. She said she had all this cash. That's right. Thank you. Gosh, I wish I could have gotten a hold of Lee today. Shoot. So anyway, yeah. Thank you. Again, skipping back and forth here. That's right. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I wanted to mention real quick, quick, real quick. <laughs> because people, <laughs> yes, real quick. people are bring it up in chat about the six children. Mm -hmm. I messed oh. with you about. Yeah. They're safe. Yes. They're, in fact, let's talk about that real quick because that is in our description. Uh, the six kids that, uh, uh, that were missing and it was like, oh my God, they're, you know, when you hear that, when you hear the parents have been abusive and the kids are missing, it's like the worst, absolute worst. And uh, hold on, I got my, I got my link here. Just a minute. Dee, 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 dee. Okay. No, that's what I want. Well, oh, good Lord. hold on. Thank you I, for reminding me of that. So we have good news tonight. Uh, Lachelle, the EMT who was missing, who was stopped, she's been found safe and the kids are found safe and sound. Uh, Haverville, Massachusetts, police in Massachusetts said six siblings from Haverville were found safe Saturday evening after previously being reported missing. State police announced that um, on Wednesday, a girl told Haverville police that her mother and stepfather abused her and her seven siblings. An investigation into the parents was started, and authorities said they realized the whereabouts of the six young children were unknown. According to the police, the parents of the children and family members were uncooperative in locating the children. Officials reported at 7.35 p.m. Saturday tonight that all six children have been found. Haverville police said the children are in good health and are in custody of the Department of Children and Families. State police said, state police said the six children ranged in age from seven months to nine years old. Jeez. Yeah. In an email sent to New Center 5, Haverville Mayor Jim Flortini, dee, dee, dee. oh, good Lord, an ad pops up, of course. Uh, said Lynn Police, the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families, and other agencies are involved in the investigation. According to... Uh, <laughs> The mayor, the case appears to be a custodial dispute. Well, and those can be the scariest ones of all. And again, I'll put these links in the description. So hang on here. There we go. Okay, so I think we've got everything kind of straightened out here. Uh, the text messages from Letitia, where she talked about the crazy, the the pregnant woman talking crazy and all of that. That was her story. The pregnant woman had all this cash in her belly that she picked up and being kidnapped and blah, blah, blah. Get this. She's floating that story to Lee Egan years before the trial, you know, trying to get her to believe it. And uh, what I love is when she said, you know, I did cut the carpet and throw it out, but I, I didn't try and get rid of it. The police got it. Yeah. Really? I mean, really? Yeah. And, and uh, I know Lee will get back to me on those calls and the, the more information, but uh, there are some good little tidbits in there. And then the Heather Daybell story where she said, uh, thank everybody for their support. And then she said, uh, one down and two to go. Now I think you are absolutely right. She was talking about trials. My first thought was she was talking about people, but no, trials. So, and people are weighing in, experts are weighing in on Lori's reaction to the guilty verdict yesterday. She had her arms folded like this, like a petulant little child, like neener, neener. Defiant, yeah. Defiant, yeah. And uh, that's what they've all said is like, she looked really angry. And supposedly the word around the courthouse was she was really angry that her defense attorney threw Chad under the bus. That her defense attorney tried to make it sound like that she did all of this because of Chad, because Chad was an evil force. Really? You don't think for one second, hold on, if you do that, author of text, bug nugget the first, no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> if, I'm sorry. Where, I don't even know where I was. I just lost my train of thought. She was uh, Chad, heard them blaming Chad. 
Oh, yeah, she was very upset that, that, oh, if you think for one second that Chad Daybell won't throw Lori under the bus, like I said last night, not only throw her under the bus, back up, go over her again 20 times, you know, take a pickaxe, chop her up, throw her on fire and throw her away. They're wrong. They're, he's going to, if he goes to trial, he's definitely going to throw her under the bus. So anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway, okay. Now let's move on to woo. It's going to be a short uh, live stream tonight. Cause guys, I gotta be honest. I'm beat, 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 beat. Did I mention I'm beat? Moonlight view. <laughs> Bug is innocent. Bug is innocent. <laughs> so let's see. Let's see. Hello, love and Coco. Good to see you. Uh, Abolus UA. Glad you made it. Breakaway 33. Marilyn Landis, PB and J, uh, Seeking Truth Wisdom. Hello. Do, do, do. If, God, I know I've missed so many people tonight. Uh, Marilyn Clausen. And Nightbot is even here. Yay. Shimmer Lights, Moonlight View, DB. Hey, gang. You know, I wanted to mention something because I was reading the affidavit here. Yeah. For Letitia. And Lee mentions the polygraph. Mm hmm. Yes. And in the affidavit, it talks about that Letitia went to fakepolygraph.com. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 She went and she thought that, again, she's so, I don't know, I don't want to say stupid, but I don't know how else to say. She's so stupid. She thought she could pass it. Hi, Lori Day. I mean, she thought that would work. Fake. Uh, polygraph.com, you know. Uh, C. Lopper says, Letitia told Lee, hold on. Letitia told Lee that someone was pregnant in the hot. That's right. Because it was her excuse for not meeting Lee to show her the polygraph results. Thank you. That was it. That was it. And Lee didn't obviously didn't believe it for a second. You know, thank you. C. Lopper. Thank you very much. I, I should have known that there is a website that you can contact and get fake verified. It says it looks it's verified. You can pick what questions you want asked and everything. It's just a fake thing. Well, I should have known. Here's the thing. If if Letitia is going to pass a polygraph test, it's going to be given by law enforcement. She's not yeah. going to show up with a test. But again, that's her arrogance, my friends. That is her arrogance. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, okay. We need woo-woos. All right, here's the deal. Here is the uh, link if you have a woo-woo. Be sure and join us. Now, I'm, let me tell you, I am looking for, let me grab it again, because I have a great video I want to show you, a fantastic video. But if you see this person in chat, Kellyum's uh, Chamazing World. We've seen Kellyum in chat before. And Kellyum sent me this incredible heat censored camera video that at a at a cemetery that is so creepy i can't even tell you and i was hoping he would come on tonight but i haven't heard from him people just they leave me <laughs> they just drop out of my life so thank thank you c lopper thank you i'd forgotten that you got and people please understand you know we it's not just this trial that we're following it's Lori's, it's all the stuff on web sleuths. My brain is just overloaded. And again, maybe I should have held off on the Lee Egan interview until I got, until I could have gotten in touch with her after she sent me these, but I figured you want to hear them. So I thought it was a good interview anyway. Mm -hmm. de -de 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 oh, PB and J said she left her DNA on the like button. Uh, thank you, PB and J. That's right, people. If you can hit that like button uh, again, we, survive on donations and real quickly uh i have to take boo to the vet he has been sneezing and he won't stop a few years ago he was sneezing like crazy and a big long blade of grass came out of his nostril but this is different he's got a little bit of clear discharge and uh, i'm hoping it's uh, everything i've read says it'll go away eventually it's like a cold um so i'm waiting a few days before i take him to the vet but uh yeah, I uh, if, if you could help with that, that would be incredible. Let me put up the information here. 
the PB and J's comment reminded me of my son. He's 22 now, but when he was little, he was like eight years old. He'd yeah. go over the house and he'd roll on my bed and go, I left my DNA on there. <laughs> That's a sign. <laughs> That's a sign that you have too much true crime in your life. And your and kid is touch. talking about DNA. So. He'd go touch things. There's my DNA there too, mom. <laughs> oh, that is too adorable. That's too cute. Well, he is uh, going into criminal justice, so it's it's okay. He is? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. We'll have to have him as a guest. That'll be wonderful. Um, C. Lopper says, hey, y'all, years of lurking here. That was my first comment. I'm um, Cindy uh, Cindy Z on WS. Oh, love you too, Cindy Lopper, th or C. Lopper. Thank you. And thank you for uh, reminding us of that story. I'd completely forgotten it. So anyway, I just put up. Uh, our PayPal, did I? Yeah. Our PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. If you could, that would be fantastic. And again, if you can't, we understand completely. Do not feel obligated. It is hard to donate these day, days. And a dollar is a meal, and I get it. So if you could just hit that, like they say, put your DNA on that like button, that will help us <laughs> tremendously. So... Uh, let's see here. Well, okay. Uh, thank you, Laura Thomas. Thank you. Hello, the Harvey 40. Good to see you. Okay. Does anybody have any woo woo stories? I'm going to put the link up again. Oh, and if you want to call in rather than just do the link, let me get that for you. Okay. Hang on. I got it right here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Here is the phone number if you want to call in and just do audio and you don't want to use the link. There is the phone number. Okay. So there you go. Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? Now, we did have a woo-woo happen here on Friday. Is that not correct, Insightful One? Yes, we did. <laughs> okay. I had just gotten out of the shower and uh, we had... I think it happened when they announced that the uh, verdict had been reached. So we finished the interview with uh, Brandon Boudreau. I think it, I can't remember. Somebody was on the stand and we finished that interview and I came on and I was talking and actually I was walking toward the couch and all of a sudden my phone goes, I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Now for my phone to do that, you have to hold down the button on the phone and then say a question. The, the phone has to feel, it has to, hold on. It has to feel me, hold it down, and then it waits for me to say something. Like, hold on, I'll show you. <laughs> Open web sleuth. No, it's not doing anything. Are there any gas? Are there any gas stations nearby? I found a few places near you. Let's see, and. You have to hold it down. I mean, you physically put pressure on it. You heard it. You saw me. I wasn't, I didn't have my phone in my hand, nothing. It was way on the other end of the couch and it just did it. It was the you, weirdest thing. You had walked away and I was talking and your phone was rude to me. That That's what it was, right? Yep. It said it didn't understand me. And I said, well, what? <laughs> what do you mean it didn't understand me? What do you mean? <laughs> so, oh boy. Anyway. So, yeah, if you could, uh, uh, we survive on donations here, but again, I have a uh, very big and I'm sure pricey vet appointment for Boo, the kitty cat. So anything you could do would be greatly appreciated. So appreciated, everybody. Is nobody going to call in with Woo Woo? Well, oh, here's somebody. Hold on. Hold on. Good. Hold on. Hi, who's this? Hi, is this is Trisha? Who's this? Oh, DB. Oh, DB. Okay, hold on. Let me get you uh, hooked up to my uh, JBL speaker. Okay. Hang on. Okay, we've got DB. We all know DB, right? Yep, from chat. Yeah. Of course. Now let me turn this on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. D, D, D. Oh, come on. 
Come on. Uh, DB, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, where we can hear her. How you doing? I'm good. Good, good. I wanted to give my woo-woo story. Please, let's hear it. We have our first woo-woo of the night, everybody. Go for it. Well, my mom died. I'm the oldest of five daughters. And uh, my two youngest daughters, my two youngest sisters, went back to my mother's house. Mm -hmm. And when they did, the new owner said, <clears throat> we knew you were going to come. And my sisters were like, well, why did you know that? And they said, well, because your mother is haunting the house. What? Whoa. Uh -huh. Yeah. But they weren't upset about my mother haunting the house, which was upsetting to me, but was very exciting to my sisters. Okay, let me... Apparently... Let... Oh, keep going, uh, the, keep going. Apparently the people thought that <clears throat> there were like record players that would play mm -hmm. in the house. And where... Um, the new owners were describing exactly the way that my mother would walk around the house. And apparently she would comfort them as children. They're, she would comfort their children, which was even weirder. But then it got even more bizarre because all the neighbors know, these are like doctors and lawyers. <clears throat> they all know that my mother's house is haunted and that she lives there. Okay, wait a minute. I need to I need to back up here because I'm confused. Okay. Like, start over. Whose house are we talking about that your mother is in? My her her house before she died. Okay, this was a the house, house I, the, before I, I lived in it too. Okay, so who are these people that are saying your mom is haunting them? The new owners. Okay, so they had already purchased the house. Right. right? Okay, so they're living in the house. Exactly. And they knew that you were going to come over because they said... They knew that my two younger sisters were going to go there. Because they said your mom told us. So when you say when you say they're wa walking around, are you still there? Hello? What happened? Something happened. Just a second. DB, are you still there? Ah! What happened? Hold on. The haunted phone. It's the haunted phone. It is. Oh, there she's calling back. Okay. I don't know what happened. I don't either. It just like it just clicked off. Yeah. See. No. So so they were aware that my sisters were going to show up, and they had they were actually expecting them to come. Wow. But when they say that your mom walks around, are they yes. saying they actually saw her? No. They 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 but they could hear her. And if their their young children were upset, my, they said that my mother would comfort them. How would she comfort so, them? Well, she would play a record player. What? It's like my sisters were so excited and I was completely horrified okay. by the story. So do they mean like a record player would just come on? Yes. Yes. Whoa. Jeez. Exactly. Oh, my. And so you say it horrified you. Why did it horrify you? Well, you know, you don't want your mother to be a ghost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not, you know, you want her to rest in peace, right? Right. Well, do you think that she is not at peace because she's there with these people? Oh, I definitely think she's not at peace. And, and what? then what's even more bizarre is that most of the neighbors that live there still live there. Mm -hmm. They're all, you know, judges, lawyers, doctors, and they all know that the house is haunted. They, and how do they know that? I don't, I don't know, but Becky and, and uh, Lisa went around and was talking to the old neighbors and they were like, yeah, 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 we know. Well, I wonder if they've seen your mom. I don't know. How, how would it, I don't think anybody has seen her, but I think that they, well, I, I can't say that for sure, but um, she definitely is in the house. There's no doubt about that. How would you feel if you went to the house and 
like a record started playing or the kids said, you know, the nice lady made us, made us feel better. Would that scare you? Um, it would make me very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't welcome it. <laughs> right. You know, I, you know, but that's me, which compared to my sisters. Um, DB, you've been in, in chat for a while and um, you're a great contributor to the conversation and we love having you. Have you ever had any other woo-woo type experiences? The only other time is that when I was, um, like, I'm going to say in my early 20s, my mother would go to a place called, I'm from Western New York, and there's a place called Lilydale. Mm -hmm. And so Lilydale, they like read your palms or they, you know, do dances and stuff like that. And so she went there <laughs> and she came back and she was very upset with me. And she said, I went there for myself, and all they did is talk about you. And I said, well, I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you have to hear it because I spent all this money. I said, I'm not going to hear it. One way she put that, that time was a cassette. So she put the cassette in, and she pushed play, and the cassette broke. Oh, no way. <gasps> uh -huh. Did you ever get to hear it? No. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's crazy. I know. Well, how do you feel so about it? My mother it? was was like on that spiritual side. That was kind of a little bit different than her, right? You know. And so, how do you feel about woo woo and ghost stories? You don't like them? No, I I do like them. I think that they're interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that they're very interesting. I think that people have genuine experiences. I don't doubt that the people that live in my mother's house. I I don't think for a second that they're lying. No, I don't think so either. Oh, gosh, no. Why mm -hmm. would they? You know, mm -hmm. why would they? Mm -hmm. They wouldn't. Exactly. They absolutely would not. So, wow. Yeah. Are, are you? Are, do you have any um, any thought of going down and talking to these people that are, that are in your mom's house? If I would go back and visit, you know, I might be open to it, yeah. I think that would be very... But, but not to try to find out anything about my mother right you know I wouldn't really be you know I, I mean I would assume that now this is like uh you know although my sisters every time they go home they visit there and you know they're still very open to the fact that my mother they're very comfortable that is that's amazing that really I is know. wow I know. I know well if you ever do go back and they ever want to like you know talk about it have them come on woo woo we'd love to have them oh th oh that would be an interesting conversation that would be very interesting absolutely yes, it would be. because i mean it's because it's like a confirmed ghost between a lot of people it's not like a little you know right not a little right i mean she's a ghost there's no there's not a doubt in my mind that my mother's a ghost yeah and growing up, did you ever have any of those experiences? Um, no. Hmm. And this, so no. this just happened when your mom passed away. Right. I mean, that happened. I mean, my mother was, uh, my grandmother used to read tea leaves. Um, so she was kind of into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then she got out of it. And then my mother was always kind of into the woo, -woo stuff, which was, you know that was her thing and uh but it wasn't you know my, my mother always wanted to find out things that instead of she always wanted to know things in advance does that make sense right no that so absolutely that, makes sense absolutely yeah so and so that's why i think she she was into it mm -hmm. you know where myself i'll just let life kind of unfold <laughs> Well, DB, thank you so much. This is fascinating to me that uh, yeah. your mom is still back at her old house and the owners know it and they're they're fine with it. And they, they say that she's even comforting their children. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Don't, I mean, it, I hope that gives you some. Yeah. Hey, hey, stop it. I hope that gives you some, uh, you know, comfort that your mom is kind and is there and is helping helping little children. Yeah, well, I definitely think it's a unique story. Very unique. Very, very. I never had, yeah. never had anything like it. 
So no, <laughs> DB, thank well, I, I absolutely love you. I love your show. Thank you, DB. I, I love your personality. I love your humor, and I love the fact that you're just that you just really go into these very serious crimes, but you keep us all balanced. And oh, I appreciate it very much. You are. You know what? That means the world to me. Thank you very, very, very much. I really appreciate it, and we love you too, my dear. Okay. You have a good night. You too. Thanks for calling. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. <clears throat> Our one and only D B D E E B E E. And uh yeah, I love that. You know, knowing that your mom is there comforting people, that's great. I think that's absolutely wonderful. So anyway, okay. I like the record player thing, you know, because when I was a kid, we my mom would play um story records for me and my mama. When I'd stay at her house and take a nap, she would play a record for me, but she would play the song Cow Patty. Cow Patty. How did that go? I, I don't remember that I one. I don't know. I just thought it was very strange, but mm -hmm. it's a memory I have of her doing that, you know? It's, That's so sweet. Know. That is sweet. <laughs> um, again, everybody, because I'm old and uh, I forget, <laughs> I'm going to repeat a story again that has to do with a record player. It's one of my major woo-woo stories. We have a lot of new people here. So, uh, again, I was 12. It was a Saturday afternoon. You know, nice, very calm. I'm thinking it's springtime. And on my big, huge stereo, if you put a whole bunch of 45s, you know, and they would drop down and play each one. Well, if you put a whole bunch of them on, it would, um, it, it would play the same 45 over and over. It wouldn't drop down. Wow. And I'm trying to remember what it was. I used to know what song it was playing. I think it was a Rolling Stones song. Ooh. And uh, anyway, I'm doing the dishes and I'm home alone. And all of a sudden the stereo goes brr, 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 and stops, you know, that. Brr, brr, brr. And I thought, well, maybe the electricity's out. The electricity wasn't out. So I walked in and I looked downstairs. I was at the top of the stairs and I, I looked down and I heard it before I saw it. I heard the sound of a coffee table moving across the carpet. And I look to the coffee table and it is being pushed. I can see it as clear as day being pushed up against the couch, you know, like somebody's pushing it, but they didn't have like a lot of strength. It was like little, little moves, you know, that, that uh, scraping sound that if you're yeah. pushing something on a carpet and I sat there and I just stared at it. And then it got up to the couch and it stopped. And I calmly went and I got a sweater and I sat outside on the, you know, right outside the front door on the step. And I waited for somebody to come home because I sure as hell wasn't going back in that house. Uh -uh. And um, of course, my brother was the first one home. And of course, he tormented me about it, <laughs> you know, but th they didn't believe me. They thought I'd been seeing I, it. I saw I heard it first. I didn't see it first, you know, yeah. and then, you know, and the record player stopping, it was one of those great big stereo things that's stopping, you know, but the electricity's on and I go and I look and I would say it moved maybe about, uh, about six or seven inches, but it was in real, it was in short spurts, like, poof, 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 you know, like that. It wasn't big, one big smooth push. So very, it was very weird, very, very wow. weird. And this was a new house. We had, uh, we bought it in like 1963 and it was just a, a, a small family home. So let, I don't know if it was built on a burial ground or what, but uh, yeah, that just freaked me out to no end. But thank you, DB. Thank you so, so much. And I want to thank um, the people who have donated. Let me get to them really quickly here. Uh, thank you, Laura T. You are a sweetheart for the PayPal. And Peggy J, love you, my dear. Thank you very much. Ginger P, you're a doll. And Bjorn Homequest, oh my gosh. You are such a supportive person. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, these are from yesterday. I just want to make sure I got them. Uh, Patricia H, thank you. Karen C, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Pamela K, thank you. And Laura T again. Oh my gosh, that's two in two days. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we have a, uh, a Venmo here. 
And that is Sherry O. Thank you, Sherry O. For Venmo, that is very kind. Let me do one more quick look here. Like I said, we're going to make it kind of a short one tonight because I'm pooped, people. I am pooped, pooped, yeah. pooped, 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 pooped. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Well, uh, if there's no more woo-woos, then we are going to head out, my darlings. Okay. So here's the deal. Ping will be here Sunday night for Sunday Nights with Ping. He'll be here at 930 Eastern. You don't want to miss it. Ping does a great show every Sunday night. Uh, he features crime in Australia and crime from all over the world, actually. And, you know, I love Ping's voice. It's so soothing and reassuring. And you will love him, too. It's on this channel. And it's every Sunday night at 930 Eastern. And we'll be back on Monday. And I don't know what's going to happen on Monday. But it will be very interesting. I can guarantee you that. And in the meantime, I'll get in touch with Lee and, and get these stories all straightened out about... Uh, uh, about uh, Letitia. And thank you for correcting us on the stories. I did not remember the pregnant woman story. I'm trying to figure out who, who she brought in that was pregnant. Yeah. You know, she's made up that story. That's right. You're absolutely. And I thank you. And I appreciate everybody uh, correcting us on that. So, and thank you to Allison and Facebook land. And uh, again, if you get a chance, go check out Heather Daybell on Facebook and, and put a nice comment. She's a wonderful woman who has been very supportive of the victims and their families in the Daybell trial. And uh, her husband is Chad Daybell's brother. And uh, I, I don't think they talk and I don't blame him because again, the story is Chad was very, very mean to Heather when his brother was dating her. And she's a lovely lady, lovely lady. So everybody happy Mother's Day tomorrow. Yes, happy Mother's Day, and what a great Mother's Day gift. Lori's found guilty, Letitia's found guilty. These monsters are never going to get out again. Yeah. And let's just keep on keeping on, people, okay? We won't forget the victims, I promise you. And we'll see you Monday night at 1030 Eastern. Tomorrow night is uh, Ping the Router at 930. Thank you so much to our moderators, Moonlight View, Love and Coco, uh, ping the router. And of course, insightful one. Thank you for all you do. Okay, everybody. We'll talk soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.